Perfect. All right. <laughs> for the for the second attempt, this is uh, the second of August, twenty twenty three. We've started a new month. Welcome to the Aries Working Group call for this week. We have a great agenda um, with some great topics today, um, and so we are glad you're here. This is an anti. This is an anti. This is a hyperledger meeting, and so the uh, antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Um, meeting notes. All right, those uh, links are in the meeting notes. Uh, please reach out if you have any concerns there at all. Um, you're welcome to add yourself to the attendees list with the link in the chat um, or make any other adjustments to the agenda that would be useful for the community. And we're glad you're here. Is there anyone new today that would like to introduce themselves? Okay, recognize everyone. Glad you're all here. Um, are there any announcements that should be on our list but are not? All right. Do any of our uh, projects want to share release status or work updates? I don't believe there's been an AFJ or bifold call since the last meeting. So there's not likely anything there. Is that just a scheduled uh, thing or is there? Uh, AFJ has decided to move bi-weekly, like every two weeks for the time being. And the call for bifold didn't happen yesterday. Okay. All right. Any other updates that folks want to share? Everyone was just really eager to get to our topics today, which is just fine. Um, Sam? Uh, yes, please. Hey, Jason from Bifold. In our last meeting, we discussed pausing for August because we went down from about 14 people down to three, and they were all from BC. So rather than just have an echo chamber of a meeting, we're just going to pause while people enjoy their summer and pick up Bifold again in September. Okay, that is worth knowing. I'm going to add that to the, actually the announcements probably since I don't. Um, and AFJ went bi-weekly. That's correct. Awesome. Just for the duration of summer. I guess uh, bi-weekly for summer. Yeah, I guess for the duration of August now. I hear that. Well, I highly support the ability of folks to take vacations. That's a fantastic thing to do. All right. So uh, here's what we have on our agenda uh, today. Um, a marketing update from uh, Helen and Alex. Uh, Stephen Kern with a uh, with a uh, early uh, the Aries Project quarterly update. A quick review that that's uh, due tomorrow. Um, some update on Did Peer Three. Um, as well as some related issues there. Um, and that kind of bleeds a, a little bit into the unqualified uh, did stuff that we have uh, down below. Um, and so we have, uh, we that, that's what we have on deck for today. Is there any additions or changes or anything that we want to make to the agenda before we get going? All right. Uh Hey, Go sorry, ahead, Patrick. Patrick here. Uh, just wondering about IndiVDR uh, and perhaps uh, Aries Ascar. Are these uh, components, you know, uh, suitable for discussion on these calls? Um, yes, they they can be. Uh, they can be discussed elsewhere, but they are certainly, uh, you know, uh, acceptable topics here. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We we just started. I, I, I'm not sure if I have a specific topic. Uh, but um, I've been wondering about in the VDR. We just started recently, like uh, kind of further playing with um, integration to Aries VCX and testing it out in production and whatnot. And uh, I don't know, I, I noticed like it's actually a bit, uh, uh, you know, slower compared to uh, 
uh, the Libyan the implementation. I was wondering why, but uh, I don't really have any inputs. More of a uh, wondering about other people's experiences with NDVDR and transition from LibMD. So perhaps you can put it in the note, and if anyone has any comments on that, then we can perhaps exchange few thoughts. Um. We will definitely list it there, and it, and it probably could be useful um, to have. Uh, we'll have to look at what co is coming in the in the uh, the next um, uh, meetings, but it might be useful to have an update on those projects. Just generally speaking, and some discussion on what's next there. So, Patrick, did, uh, did you say Indie VDR was slower, or the combination? Yeah, yeah. So Indie VDR seems to. So we are using. Uh, I'm not sure if I. If it's fine if I go like a bit deeper uh, right now, uh, but uh, basically in a nutshell, uh, VDR tools from our observation, our fork of in the SDK was faster in fetching transactions from the ledger than in the VDR, like okay. uh, multiple times basically. Okay. Um not so much has been spent on indie VDR optimizations. Askar, uh, we found the use of the combination to be way more stable and and faster. Um, so surprised you're finding that on indie VDR specifically. Um, so might be worth looking at. Um, but we definitely have found the combination of using all three to be way way faster, like significantly faster. Like we had a uh, deployment of the Aries media mediator service, for example, that was unstable and, um, and, and um, almost, um, could not, could not handle load. And, um, the transition to Ascar was significant and much, much better. Oh yeah. So just to be clear in, in, in this case, I, we haven't actually tried Ascar yet. Uh, we were okay. just, I was testing, uh, in isolation in the VDR and okay. like, uh, um, you know, living yeah. the implementation, of the ledger client. Yeah, definitely put things you find out there. Um, and let's take a look at the, the code in there. Um, you know, issues on the in the VDR repo. There hasn't been much feedback on that one. It's basically been done and 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 working. So hmm. it's certainly working, um, but nobody's really done a whole lot to improve uh, to to look at um, specifically on speed for that. So right, that would, right, yeah. All right, I'm I'm not going to steal more more uh, <laughs> unexpected <laughs> more minutes. So let's let's just hold the agenda. It's good to hear you using it though that way and testing it that way. Absolutely, and uh, and that that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I, uh, I I love I love topics that we talk about because people bring them up and want to talk about them. That makes me very happy. So, uh, so I appreciate you bringing that up. Any other changes or, or adjustments we want to make? All right, uh, Helen or Alex, can I? Uh, do you need a minute? Yeah, um, so there is a draft uh, page in the wiki for the new Aries uh, language. Um, you'll find it, let me grab the link um, so folks can look at it. Um, it's gonna be, we started the, basically we started the rollout of the new language um, that was developed in the Aries marketing working group. Um, it'll take a little while just to get it updated in all the different places. They use it on the homepage of the wiki, on um, the the landscape, the, the project landscape on, on hyperledger.org, which has just been updated yet as of yesterday. So now we can update it on the Hyperledger website. So lots of places, lots of kind of playing whack-a-mole with <laughs> updating the, Ari the, the Aries messaging, but we are slowly rolling it out. So um, if anybody has any comments, suggestions, et cetera, please, uh, uh, I welcome you to join us at uh, the last Tuesday of the month um, to talk um, with the Aries Marketing uh, Group and contribute your thoughts uh, to this effort. Whoa, and per Stephen, I just loaded up the new hyperledger.org has, uh, has some redesign going on there. Um, and so that's uh, that's cool. 
And yeah, Helen, if you would, um, wouldn't mind dropping that link in that way we can get it in the, in the notes and people can, uh, can find it. That'd be awesome. Yes. I accidentally was going to send it privately to someone, but here we go. Send it to everyone. <laughs> So here, this uh, has got a draft page up here then. And so this looks far uh, larger than the other, uh, than the previous, uh, than the previous page that we have. Any specific thing that you want to call out there? Um, no, just that top section has been updated. Um, the documentation page I'm still working on uh, to, to include all those awesome links that folks sent me. Thank you so much. If you uh, have other links that are helpful, um, you, you think would be helpful for either uh, kind of businesses, business decision makers or developers, please don't hesitate to keep uh, sending them along. Um, again, we'd love a, a really um, robust, comprehensive-ish <laughs> looking uh, list of resources for folks uh, to see when they come to uh, learn more about ARIES. Um, so we'll continue to be working on that uh, documentation list and um, and updating uh, this this messaging across uh, everywhere <laughs> in all the places. Excellent, thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. Anything else about marketing? Uh, Alex, anything else you wanted to raise? No, that's perfect. It's actually okay. happening. <laughs> Very much appreciate uh, all of your efforts in doing so. Yeah, and it is Hyperledger identity, oh, like fo the focus this this quarter for uh, the Hyperledger staff marketing efforts. So if you or your organization have events, white papers, dogs, any any sort of um, new products, any new blogs, whatever, um, please get in touch with the, the staff because they are um, trying to put together a uh, kind of a best of recent news from the identity community, uh, from the Hyperledger identity community. So um, uh, please reach out to me or the staff uh, if you want to be included uh, in those efforts. And Sean Bowen, like there's been lots of emails that have been sent out to the listserv uh, with a lot of those details as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, next on the agenda is the update from Steven. Steven, do you want to drive or do you want me to pull it up? Or the other thing, I think I said the same thing twice. Uh, you're muted, Steven. Sorry, uh, go ahead and pull it up if you could. Thank you. Okay, so every quarter we put in a quarterly report um, to the uh, Technical Oversight Committee of Hyperledger. So this is the uh, draft for ARIES. Um, this will go in by tomorrow as a PR into the um, GitHub Hyperledger TOC um, uh, repo. So even if you don't review it here, you can review it there and, and add comments and things. But if you get a chance today to look at this, um, I'd appreciate it. Um, things, um, so there's a bunch of facts in here, um, things like the releases, there's an activity dashboard from LFX Insights that show what's been happening. And then there's a quick summary there. So that link Aries activity dashboard goes to a page that is for this particular quarter, which is the April to June, end of June quarter, by the way. Um, I highlight in this what's been going on. Um, so you'll see that there's the AFJ, the move away from the ND SDK, um, the addition of the CL signatures repo, um, uh, increased engagement across the um, three of the four communities, um, Akapai, AFJ, and, and VCX, as far as um, coordinating um, the new socket doc and um, a little bit of a touch on the news and the progress made on, on the use of OCA or overlays capture architecture. Um, I then do highlight the, the um, each of the projects uh, VCX. This one I didn't, I haven't updated the VCX one yet. Um, this is the same as last time. 
So um, Patrick, I'm glad you're here because I really appreciate either a quick Discord note or, or what you'd like to put into here. I know there's a ton going on um, in that. So um, tweak this wording. Um, I would dig in if, if I need to, I can dig in and, and sort of highlight what I think are the things, but it'd be much better if it came from you. Um, I'm not sure I've done the AFJ one. I think I have. Um, the 4.0 release was huge. Um, so talked about that and the addition of the open ID for VCs, um, exchange protocols, um, update on Akapai, and then what I've been able to discern from what's going on in the Aries Go. And so that's um, basically it. Um, if people could um, take a look at that and if you have any other comments or reviews uh, or, or or emphasis uh, that you think we should put in this, um, I'd welcome your contribution. Uh, I need to highlight here that um, here in the Aries community, there's there's two main bulk pieces of effort from not the code direct uh, stuff, but the community organization. Um, and Stephen, for years now, has been driving up the quarterly updates um, and has been doing a fantastic job. Um, and so uh, if you if you can help, um, then uh, then please do uh, jump in and review um, and, uh, and and everything else. Also, a periodic reminder that uh, both Stephen and I kind of just volunteer to keep this going. Um, if you are interested in being involved more deeply in, in sort of the the uh, the community support aspect of Aries, your help is always welcome. Um, Stephen and I are not really planning on going anywhere. Um, but I, we certainly want to make it uh, an opportunity for anyone that does want to be more involved to be able to do so. Um, and so so please reach out to either Stephen or I if you have interest in helping with the quarterly updates or regularly running of meetings is something uh, that, that is also, of course, always open. Um, and so, Stephen, appreciate your work here. No problem. By the way, there is also um, similar documents on and on creds and indie that I've done. Um, I posted links in the um, in, in each of those um, Discord channels to let people know where they are and they can update them. Warren. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Um, I was wondering whether it's um, worth mentioning um, where each of these projects were relevant stack up against the different AIPs. It's a good idea. Um, and in fact, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think that's more relevant within the AIPs, or sorry, within ARIES itself. I don't know the TOC, but I, I think that's a really good idea. I think I'll see what I could do about adding that. I'll definitely need input. Um, so I may just put that as a, okay, I wanna get this for next time. But I think I'll put it in there as a as a target. Great. Thank you. Great suggestion. I like it. You know, when I look at this, Stephen, it it uh sometimes it feels like uh progress is slow. And and then I look at what's happened just in the last quarter, and that's kind of amazing. I'm also um it's interesting that uh, you know, the 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 comparison is quarter to quarter. Um, it's a little bit unfair comparing. Uh, just prior to summer to during summer, just because of vacations and everything else that are going on. But yeah, um, interestingly, I mean, I just put in, I just phrase it the way I phrase it every quarter, but this was, um, interestingly, it was up about 12% and down about 11% uh, on or up and up 11% the pre from the previous quarter. So basically this is the same as the, um, uh, last quarter of of 2022 <laughs> interestingly it was almost identical to that but anyway i just i just say here's where we were quarter to quarter right there's still no that's fantastic well and and seeing this is actually kind of a good uh you know indicator of our progress so that's that's yeah. pretty great yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else on the quarterly update And I'll post when I post the actual PR. I'll uh, I'll post a link to the PR itself, so anyone can review it and comment on it as part of the PR. The TOC will go through it, um, probably leave it unmerged for about a week or so, and then merge it 
probably a week uh, week tomorrow, assuming no one objects. And they will discuss it. Awesome. Cool. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is the did peer three stuff. Um, this has had uh, some forward progress, um, but but uh, but a little bit of weird uh, weirdity that we're trying to manage. Um, Daniel uh, Bloom had brought up some uh, some issues against um, uh, the specific wording in the examples and, and caught some things that needed to be fixed. He has verified this and included some some example code using multi formats uh, library in Python in order to verify. And so I wanted him to independently verify that just to make sure that it was working. And we're having some trouble getting it to like merge GitHub's being weird. Um, and so the work has been done there. We're just trying to make sure that these uh, these make it in here. Um, these fixes specifically address some of the issues that, uh, that Daniel brought up um, and to just, um, and, and to sort of clarify that and, and make sure that the, the encoding is proper. Um, and so I appreciate Daniel's uh, you know, catching important things there, and we'll work to get this this merged. And and I think that that does comprise the 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 um, the total number of needed changes to the peer method spec for uh, for did peer three, with one exception that I'll talk about in a second, which I think should actually probably go somewhere else. Um, and so um, the there's a handful of other related uh, things to have happen here. Um, this is a PR that Stephen has created um, against uh, the the legacy did transformation that Timo wrote up, um, given their experience there. And so uh, I've got uh, comments from you here, Stephen, on uh, that in particular. Um, you also mentioned um, the the adding it into the community coordinated update, and there's a comment somewhere where Timo mentioned that that would be great. I, I don't remember where it was, um, but uh, and anything, uh, any commentary, Stephen, that you can add about the the, the transformation doc here? Yeah, um, I a I updated it again this morning to to add a few few more things to try to simplify it. Um, one of our developers, uh, who I don't think is here, Jason Syratuk, did some work on it and used it, and it it provided good guidance. Um, so I think it's good. Um, it's it, I think I found the the weird cases or the um, the edge cases or or the reality of what we have in unqualified dids um, in the community. So I think it's more or less right now. And then um, I'd like to take it over. Um, the only thing I, I really wish uh, Timo would um, merge this in to be able to take it from his. But if not, I think I'll take it from from um, the one I've got. If you want to look at the changes, it might be worth looking at the changes. The, your changes from this time or the or all of them? Um, all of them. Uh, yeah, if you can just look at the files change and look at it in rich format. Yeah, basically just updating the how you go through the um, how you go through it for the did peer. Um, there was some extra. Um, uh, you need to go through public key and authentication entries, um, and then the way the the service entry was done was a little odd. So um, I aligned it better and included rather than referencing how to encode it, I put the actual encoding in that third step right there, um, which is just a copy out of the did peer spec. So I did cop, uh, put a link into it, but it's just a copy of what was there. Um, and then the last one that was is was missing is the resulting string is a did peer two did, and and we want it to be a did peer three. Um, so if we actually take the did peer two that we get and convert it into a did peer three, because we're going to use did peer three from then on. So um, that's that's the changes I've made there. I think they're all reasonable, but um, Timo hasn't had a chance to go through it, it, it merge it uh, or or you know provide detailed com comments if it's not right. It would be nice to have a review of that. Um, one, uh, ideally, Timo merges this in, and then we can actually bundle it in. Were you intending to bundle it in uh, alongside the the community coordinated update RFC? Is that the right place to put that? Yeah, I think it should be an appendix in the uh, community coordinated update. Yeah. 
I, I don't mind having a separate file just for clarity, but then we could like kind of link it and make that happen there. So, um, so uh, yes, I'd rather it's, have it's it a long enough thing that. Ha- What's that? I'd rather have it in line and just put it in there. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think that can work. Whatever whatever's the most clear is the goal, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um. So the the last thing there's a there's a handful of open questions, um and uh oh, come on Tim go away. Um, the, uh, one of the, um, one of the open questions has to do with how we want to handle, um, we mentioned in, uh, um, in did peer three that you need to know that the other party actually is capable of supporting it. Um, how do I make this dumb? There, there we go. So I did some thinking on how we actually would want, um, the, um, how we would actually want to to have discover features know that you're capable of of discovering uh, or of supporting did peer three. This is a little bit slightly separate from the case, Stephen, where you're talking about with the update, where we're going to hop directly to three for use, and we don't actually have to pause it. It um, it did peer two. Um, there's some efficiency reason to do that, and we know that it's already been transferred. But the general use of, of did peer three requires, of course, that you first exchange the information and then that you know the other party is actually capable of, uh, of supporting did peer three. And so we've talked about using feature discovery to do that, but with no actual details. And that was brought up by uh, by a comment from someone. Um, it may have been Ariel that, that brought that up. It's like, hey, this isn't actually documented anywhere. Like, how, how are we actually going to do that? And so um, I have some uh, some notes here on, on what that would uh, might be like that I wanted to bring up. Um, and, uh, and I think that this generally fits into the ability to, sub, to, uh, to have a feature type of did method that would allow you to disclose that you support a, a number of did methods, uh, in the, in the process of doing so. Um, but there's, there's two, there's two issues that I'm trying to address here at the same time. One is, is, uh, bringing sort of did method discovery into something that, so that it can be a feature. The second one is how we individually figure out if you support, uh, Nemalgo three of did peer, um, and so there's a, there's a couple of options that I've got here, and one of them is that if we write did method um, so that it should be a prefix match to did peer, it allows you to specify uh, or simply match the the start of a string um, when you're when you're doing this. So any any did methods that happen to use initial characters to specify particular features of things did peer does that but this would work for any others that as well if they if they do then you'd simply be able to specify like did peer three rather than saying did peer indicating that you support all of those this is a little bit uh, also necessary with did peer as we have the uh, soon to be deprecated uh, if not already uh, did peer method one which um which is being deprecated in favor of upcoming carry things um but um if you support portions of did peer rather than saying did peer like this you could simply enumerate the sort of starting things uh, that you do support out of did peer that's one idea uh, that i have uh, the other idea would be that you we simply require that did the the, the 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 did method be indicated like this and that any other details around the support could be included in some other attribute um, of of the feature type uh, disclosure so here's the id um, which would be, of course, the did method. And there's another attribute that we could include that would indicate uh, or help specify the the subset of features that you may support within uh, the did method itself. Um, and so I these are the the two ideas that I wanted to bring up. Um, and I have one more question related to this that I would love feedback on from the community uh, before I take what I've written here and actually make it something that's like published in a regular way. And that is, where should I publish this? Um, this, uh, this could be an Aries RFC, um, and that would fit with the historical use of, of, of Aries RFCs and how we do this. It has been brought up, um, that, uh, that Aries RFCs is perhaps not the place to do this when, when it is more broadly applicable. And given that this is a discover features thing, um, that, uh, that can be used, of course, directly with Didcom, um, in, in, and doesn't necessarily relate to Aries, um, should this actually be something that ends up in didcom.org? Um, is a is a way to to uh, to document that um, moving forward, um, and so 
I bring it up uh, here because it is of interest to this community, but I'm curious where this should actually land. I should mention that uh, didcom.org right now has the ability to post protocols, and this is related to a protocol, but not a protocol precisely. And so we would need some mechanism on didcom.org in order to absorb these types of, of things that have previously been Aries RFCs, but uh, but but might be better homed, uh, you know, in the larger community that's more anchored directly to didcom. So. I've launched, a, presented a little and launched a couple of questions. I should probably share the link to make this a lot easier for folks to look at directly. Um, and so that link is there and I need to change the permissions on this. I will do so. And now the link should work. Um, the uh, So those are the open questions I have. Number one, um, how, do, how do we express sort of the sub feature of did peer as it relates to did peer three and also kind of, related to, you know, did peer one um, and the fact that you may or may not support that. Um, and then um, also where should this go um, in the documentation of, of the, of the did method feature type of discover features. With that, I really want to hear what people think. So I have a, a question of how valuable um having it as part of discover feature because you basically have to use it before you get can make a discover feature call and that's you why have to, you have to know the did method that the other party supports but that's going to happen because you always pass a did in, in any time you do something like an invitation or a qr code or anything and not a band uh, invitation what's useful here particularly in the context of, of didcom v2 is that particularly if you are planning to rotate away from one did to another did in a relationship, it would be nice to know that the other relationship supports the new type of did you plan to rotate to. Okay. But chances are for did peer two, three is we want everyone to be able to support to initiate with did peer two and use did peer three through the conversation, which is why we want to propose a community update was we want everyone to shift to this. Yes, technically speaking. Yeah, because um, so in the, from the community coordinated update, I think that still makes sense and we can still write the update to yeah. indicate that. Yeah. But this is a little bit more generically as it relates to just the independent to the community in, uh, use of did peer three independent to the community coordinated update. Okay. Um, it, it could also be used to say, um, here are the did indie um, networks that I support, for example, as well. That could also be, I could state that I use certain did indie networks. Is is the network the first thing after the, yeah. the, the method? Yeah, the network is oh, the first super, thing after. That's a great example then. You're right, because you could say, here's, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit of a vote to support this as we design this this method yeah. of discover features. Cool, I, I I like that. Other comments, thoughts, questions, suggestions. Yeah, I, I like the I like the idea of matching, um, and the extension out to Indy is a is a good example. Uh, to your other question, it it does feel like it belongs um, uh, along with Didcom, and not as an Aries RFC. Uh, exactly how to do that, I I don't know, but it kind of feels like that's where it belongs. So I don't know if there's like a compend a compendium of uh, of things that go along with feature discovery as a as a mechanism in Didcom, and if so, then it's one of those. But I don't know how that's done today. So um, the feature discovery is actually defined in the spec, and uh, so discover features is the protocol name. Here's an example that's included here. Um, 
uh, that Rodolfo linked to, but it actually comes directly from the DIDCOM v2 spec. And it basically indicates that um, here it introduces the protocol and talks about uh, uh, why it's useful. Um, and then here's the, the different uh, states for this. Um, so here's the relevant chunk here. So here's the, the feature types that you must support, uh, protocol, goal code, and header. And then additional, uh, additional values of feature type may be used and unrecognized values must be ignored. So this allows for extensibility of discover features for different feature types. And then, but it doesn't specify exactly where they should be um, defined. We had some lively debate about this and it was uh, basically the, this, uh, this feature here allows for the extensibility of it from, from, uh, from this spec perspective. And then, of course, interoperability profiles can can you know mention the, the feature types in their in their usages as as must be defined. So, uh, this could live uh, in you know, proximate to didcom.org because it is a thing useful to the broader community. It would be great, for example, if it was like different feature types were linked here, but they ought to be defined someplace and. Um, you, you can often define a feature in a, in a separate protocol or a separate thing where it actually relates and you might want to discover those relevant features, but we don't actually have a good place to put one for did methods as it exists. And so um, it has been suggested, uh, Timo uh, brought this up, that that uh, many of the Aries RFCs that relate to this sort of a thing that, that are more broadly didcom related shouldn't really live within Aries. And so we don't yet have a mechanism on didcom.org to document these sorts of things uh, when they're not protocols, but we could make one. We could figure that out and have a place for those, uh, those features to go so that these types of things that are not protocols exactly, but relate to the use of protocols, um, have a home. And so, so Warren, your, your feedback that it feels proximate to didcom and we ought to figure that out is, is uh, received. If I if I represent anything you said wrong, please correct me. No, that's good. Thanks. Other comments, suggestions. Um, I, the the fact that it still relates to the protocol and how to actually use the protocol, it seems to me that um, it would still it should still live in a similar structure to the way we do the Aries RFCs. Um, perhaps it just belongs under a different subfolder. Within like didcom itself? Like did, on didcom.org? Well, so we're, the, the protocols, are, are, are they not all specified on the um, Aries site or are they split between didcom and uh the Aries RFCs. They are migrating more and more to uh historically they've been on as Aries RFCs. Uh more and more they are going to didcom.org as it relates to sort of didcom generally and not specifically Aries. And this is an example of that where like disclosing support for didcom uh, or for did methods using didcom discover features is is more didcom related than pure Aries. Um, would, would it not make sense to launch a separate uh, didcom RFC location then? Yes. And I think that's what Warren was getting to, is that something like that should exist for something like this to go there. It doesn't have to be called RFCs exactly, although it's a decent pattern. I mean, that's an effort yeah. that's long overdue The having Aries RFC as published only as GitHub readmes is is terrible. So we need something. Don't, don't hold back, Stephen. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I've been wanting, you know, I wish I could find the time. I know what we need to do. I did. Um, we did a similar thing on Akapi to publish all its readmes to a to a reasonable place. And it would be pretty easy to do that. Uh, I just haven't had the time. I'm sure 
I'd love to, I'd love to get it done that we could publish these out to a website that would actually be useful to people. So I wonder if we don't want something like um, on Didcom, uh, you know, optional features, and then there would be a way of describing, uh, linking those where appropriate to feature discovery and also linking to protocols, be they hosted on Didcom or be they hosted somewhere else. And it's a way of kind of tying stuff together, like a registry, if you will, of uh, of stuff that we know about that is, um, I'm not sure if that's the right name, but um, cause it, it, and it's all optional. So it would be like optional features and then th they would link to their respective things. Fully agree, Warren. I'm going to bring, I'll keep, keep writing this, uh, of course, and then I will bring this up to the, um, to the Didcom users group, uh, where the, who's, who's over that sort of thing. And, uh, and we'll see where we get to, um, I, um, and, and figure out how to make that happen. Um, one of the things that I do want to be involved in is that I think the book needs some better rendering and, uh, either using, uh, MK docs or docusaurus. I think would be a great way to take the book content and render it into something far more usable, referring Stephen to the work that you've done um, with the uh, with the Akapai docs and also the AFJ work that has been done in a similar way to make it more uh, nicely rendered and browsable and, and usable. Um, and so there's some there's some options there as well. Um, we may end up with uh, just for logistical reasons, uh, because of the way that that site's built, we may end up with that on a subdomain like book.didcom.org, um, but that that's certainly an option there. Um, just just for advice, um, AFJ is in DocuSaurus, and I don't know how it went, but I I tried to we tried to do um, DocuSaurus for um, Akapai, and it was really complicated, so we just gave up. And Make Docs was so much easier. So just a well. That's worth knowing. I'm going for easier rather than hard. Yeah, so maybe, found, maybe make docs. Is that how you pronounce MK docs? Is that? Yeah, I think yeah. MK docs or whatever, but the material for MK docs, which um, Hyperledger has an extra license for has extra features for, i um, not sure how needed they are, but um, was dead simple to use. And then it was, so it was, I spent way more time worrying about content than I did about trying to figure out how to get, get things connected in a way that was useful to people. Feedback. Um, that's good feedback. It would be hosted outside of Hyperledger. It'll be over in Didcom, which is managed by the diff, but still worth knowing so, uh, for those extra features anyway. So Sam, it, it, you're talking about here about the, the published form of everything. Um, is yes. Didcom still going to have a place where uh, requests for changes can be applied. Um, yes, that still works via uh, just regular GitHub um, stuff, and then it's just rendered into something nicer. So there's still a repo behind it with with the same uh, review processes and everything else that would occur there. The only difference really is the rendering. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. It's hard to beat GitHub for process management uh, of this sort of stuff. Um, okay, um, Stephen, there are some open questions here. Um, are those mostly resolved in the updates that you have submitted, or are they? Do we need to handle these independently? Um, I, I think we should just. Um, I think the answers after I've played with these a bunch. Probably we ignore the first one, and the second one is Didcom messaging. Um, one of the things I added to uh, Timo's document is he only mentioned um, Indie Agent, but I believe all three are used in different places. So I made sure that if you come across an unqualified did that has any of these three types, they all become the last, which is Didcom messaging is what they it should be. Um, uh, so that's complicated because we need to use the type in order to discover whether you're capable of receiving Didcom V2 messages or not. And Didcom messaging is designed to indicate that you support Didcom V2 message envelopes. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, then this is an issue. What should it be if we're just using DIDCOM 1? I think somewhere is defined what it should be for DIDCOM V1 in a proper DID doc, and we should use that one. I think, I don't actually know what it is. Yeah. Um. But there is a defined one, and we need to not uh, we need to not add confusion by using the same one that did v two uses. Oh, I thought, still the, v1. I thought that's what the accept field was. Yeah, I thought it was the accept field that used that. Then I don't know. Um, I'll do some research on this, and we can figure out what this ought to be. Okay. So that one, and then the other thing is. Um, uh, the first one I just got sort of hung up on. Um, I guess we should just ignore it and you just get the keys you get and you put them into the did doc. Um, for years now, we have derived the uh, key agreement key from the verification key. And... Um, and I guess we keep doing that because we already have the did doc. When you, when it's in a qualified did, we already have it. And so um, uh, and, and because the the key only exists transitionally until you you know you generate the did peer two, um, the did peer two string, and then immediately generate the did peer three for it. That's all you ever use is the did peer three one. Um, it's just a question of during that transition, during that execution of that algorithm, do we explicitly generate the um, key agreement key? And it just adds more work. So my thought was we don't, but one of the things we should definitely do going forward is, is never assume that the verification key should be used for the key agreement key um it, it, it's a separate discussion but um but we should be in my opinion we should start to be explicit about the key agreement key yeah good conversation but i agree that we should leave it out of this one uh, we should ignore okay, it from fine with that. yeah um very cool um so we only have five minutes left um, we talked a little bit about NDVDR and NASCAR, and, and I'm, I'm going to keep this in the notes so that I can, uh, so we can explore it. Oh, why did I hit that? Um, we can explore it as, uh, as, as future things. One of the topics that I, I wanted to at least briefly um, raise attention to um, was the, the um, AFJ has announced their goals to, um, to uh, coordinate efforts to bring AFJ into compliance with the uh, European Union um, digital identity um, stuff and the the architecture reference framework, and um, it, it was raised without response so far, really, um, in in our channel whether this was something that we were going to pursue as a community directly, um, that we were going to coordinate around the the types of requirements necessary to become um, compliant with the um, with the EIDIS 2.0 and the uh, architecture reference uh, framework um, and, the, and the protocols and the credential types actually mentioned there. And so I wanted to briefly bring it up to see if there was any uh, sort of initial responses to that um, and then to see if we should uh, if we should organize community time towards um, towards that goal or not, uh, depending on what people thought. Any any comments? I, I think we should organize community time because I think it's uh, it, it it would be useful at minimum to understand what what the different groups within Aries are doing and try to align as much as possible. RFCs have been a great way. The interop um, suite has been a great way. If we can keep doing that, I think it's a it helps everyone. Uh, Steve, uh, your hands up. Yeah, no, I I agree with Stephen. I think. Um, we we should definitely look at all the requirements and see how we can bring um, whatever it is we need to bring in line with them, because um, that will make our products and specifications that we're building more more marketable, more applicable in in the European market, especially. Warren. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. I just wanted to add a plus, a plus one to that. I was pleased to see Timo's uh, announcement from Animo on that. And um, if there's a larger community effort that uh, then I think that would be welcome as well. Just a question, uh, is there any place uh, I can take a look for some sort of brief conclusion? What what are these regulations and standards that UDI and RF, ARF kind of refers to? You know, what, what are the concerns of these uh, documents? Um, there's definitely some links. I don't have them off the top of my head and we, we just have like a minute or two left, but um, but we will gather those. Um, uh, if you look up, um, just for anyone looking immediately, um, Timo's, uh, if you look up Timo's post in AFJ, um, he he talks a little bit about what's required. Um, without getting too deep, um, I can uh, indicate that it involves the open ID for VCI and, VC and VP uh, protocols. Um, it involves um, SD JOTS um, as a credential type. Um, and there's also involvement or requirements around um, keys stored in hardware security modules um, in order to be compliant with the goals there. Um, those are three main topics. There's probably a couple other ones. There's um, one. Another uh, one is um, is the EU trust list that existed in the in the um, in the version one of this. Um, and um and uh and there it's basically an x509 based system um that has a, a, a of course a way of resolving those public keys um and also authorized roles within the ecosystem kind of play in there so it's a, it's a little bit of a of a lightweight governance kind of a thing um and so there's uh there's stuff like that as well um it all so it also includes it also includes mdoc and uh, oh. the local transfer of uh, MDoc as well, I believe. Yeah, their proximity protocol is what they call their Bluetooth yeah. um, uh, yeah. presentation. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, I had I had not brought up MDoc at all. Thank you, Warren. Um, and and uh, uh, Jorge, uh, you gave me your note in chat. There's the DHS is also uh, working on some stuff um, as well, and so I think that. Um, that could also be a useful thing to sort of bring up and discuss um, as far as a community effort to see uh, uh, those that are interested in in sort of coordinating or or broad community understanding of those of those efforts. Okay, so it's clear that there's some interest in here. Um, I will uh, try and coordinate um, the right stuff here, and it's actually been on our future business list at some point for um, uh, or, or future topics for to talk about um, um, EADIS two point in the ARF. And so I, uh, I will try and coordinate some, uh, some efforts there. Um, if you would like to more specifically be involved or organize presentations, please uh, holler and reach out. Um, that will uh, make it a little easier for me than, than trying to hunt folks down individually. Um, and, and, and uh, it's clear that that's a useful thing. Um, still as a high priority, we're not going to lose the transition away from the unqualified dids as that's a pretty darn important thing for our community moving forward um, for all these other things we're talking about. Um, but we can uh, we can definitely organize this. Um, another discussion that we should have as a, as a community is how does the EUDI uh, and ARF common goals affect uh, the possibility of AIP three or AIP next, um, and uh, and how we should coordinate that both with what the scope should be and what the timing should be, um, and uh, in in the utility of of doing such, um, and and how we can uh, make sure that we're not just massively replicating effort and, and goals there. And with that, we're over time. I appreciate everyone coming. Uh, this has been a fantastic meeting, and we uh, look forward to seeing you elsewhere on the internet where we all meet at a regular time, and we'll see you again next week.